So, why did you choose to marry me? Why did I choose to marry you? It's because uh, one is you're hot. <laughs> why you love ya? We have uh, two kids. We are married for almost six years already now. I always wanted a person who is very funny, very happy-go-lucky, who knows how to party and he knows how to work. You were everything that I ever dreamt of. You're like the my dream guy. Oh. Oh. Now that you know her. I nearly know her for 50 years. 42 years married, 6 years dating and so on. I'm not good looking. So I did ask her, I said, sweetheart, why you marry me? She said, actually, I'm a very practical person. I purposely choose you because you're not handsome. I say why? He say because I know if you look like Leonardo DiCaprio and Lama, all the girls want you, you know. So I chose you because I know nobody want. Only I silly enough to take you. <laughs> anyway, thank God for that. We have been married for twenty six years. First time I met her, I thought, like, wow, this is my Zura Hamza. Why? <laughs> why I choose to marry him? Is because he's very brave to meet up with my father because my father is very strict because he's an um, ex-sergeant, uh, army sergeant. <laughs> my father knows him as a recruit, so my father knows him first. When my father look at him, oh, you, this man, uh, this guy uh, want to court my daughter. I don't think so he can. But then after that, after he talked to my father, my father like, like him so much until today. Lah. We are married uh, since 2017. I've known each other from 2005, mm. so yeah, many years really. And I, I just give birth to a baby girl. Why you choose to marry me? Because I think she's something that I do, do not want to lose out and do, do not want to stop chatting together with every every day. Then in my heart, I think that no, I cannot, cannot let go of this lady. So once you let go, you will definitely regret. So that's why lock down. <laughs> lock her down. Yeah. <laughs> Is your marriage what you imagine it to be? Marriage is actually uh, it's more than what I imagine. I think marriage is a lot more about commitment. It goes beyond being so tired and still doing it. And when you have kids, it's a whole different ball game. Because both of us are in an interracial marriage with different religion, different culture, we actually took up the responsibility to look after our two boys by ourselves so that we are fair. Nobody has ever imagined that he would be the person he is today who, like after work, he comes back home. He doesn't do any more entertainment. It's all about family, about spending time with our children. So even his friends call him, he say, no, I'm very tired. I need to look after the boys. When we first got married, we always think that, wow, marriage is uh, so romantic, a knight in shining armour coming you know, for you. <clears throat> but uh, in reality, uh, we have a lot of differences. Living with, Living each, other. with each other, with all the habits and all that is, is different. So when I marry her, she said, you must wear pyjama. I said, why can't I wear my short pants, the same shirt I wear the whole day? Why can't I sleep? No way, you're not going to sleep with me if you don't. So I got to learn, you know. And one of the major adjustments is when I married her, it's like I was a captain. I have a tendency to talk down to her. You know, like, you are my subordinate, that kind of thing. Yes. And she, yeah, yes. She has to remind me, uh, excuse me, uh, I'm not your soldier. <laughs> okay, so, sorry, ma'am. We got married and we found that he was a different man. 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 I actually extend, prolong the time of courtship. Uh. Yeah, <laughs> because I realised that I want to test him whether is he stable enough, steady enough, <laughs> steady enough, patient enough to accept who I am now. He gave me that kind of secure feeling. I think this is how I, how I imagine it to be. La. We still joke, we still say <laughs> funny things, dirty things. I did um, get some experience from my friends saying that you know they did not stay together before marriage and when they actually got, get married already they realized that they cannot stay together and they cannot suit each other lifestyle and habits this is what we did before our marriage huh? so yeah, you can see like does he snore the cleanliness that kind yeah the, the sleeping style 
is a challenge or uh, more challenging than what we think of. Actually, the difficulties mostly is uh, financial. He have got all the credit cards. Although I mentioned to him, no, don't. These people coming, uh, oh, bro, your your salary, you able be able to get this credit card for so called so so good offer and something like that. In the end, I almost get a cut on my head <laughs> because you dig one hole, open up another yeah. hole. So that's the problem come. From there, I don't want to make her worry. I just try to overcome it by myself because I'm the one who create the problem. I don't want her to be involved. But in the end, she also get involved in this uh, my situation. I'm very uh, disappointed, angry and sad also because he never shared with me about his difficulties. I'm angry but then I control myself because I always think that if I uh, too much anger, we won't solve this problem. I wash my hand ready no more. I don't want to apply any of the cut. I just want my family to be uh, happy from now on. Did he change? Uh? Well, as we grow older, you kind of mellow too. So I, I just accept him as, as who, who, who he is and just... Um, well, sometimes she change. <laughs> I can't say she change. I mean, that's how to get along, you know. Are you guilty of forgetting your anniversary? 26th of March is our Hindu wedding. 26th of April is our church wedding. Yeah. 27th of April is our customary wedding. So it's like one one after another. It's like impossible to forget, but we don't know which one to celebrate all the time. For me, I, I, I'm a very practical guy, so I don't believe in anniversary. The day I met her is the best day ever. Wow! <laughs> I never forget. <laughs> I always forget. <laughs> as long as he remember that he has caught me as a wife. <laughs> Every all. day we can do our so, anniversary. Yeah. I'm a, a driver and I got a lot of time on the road. Uh, sometimes from Changi also I can buy food for them then I just bring down to Jurong. We always remember our anniversary. He's so sweet. He he will always uh, buy me flowers and gifts and all that. I'm quite a romantic person, and uh, our our anniversary, her birthday, my birthday, Mother's Day, Father's Day are all in the diary, so we don't forget. You know, we need to celebrate milestones in our life and to tell our children that marriage is good. You know, yeah, it's good. Look at mom and dad. Do you often disagree with each other? Ladies first. Okay, we disagree quite a bit when it comes to parenting. We were always fighting back then. We can accept whatever that happened between us, but not our kids. Especially our very first born, because I'm the only daughter and he's the only son, and that's our first son. So we had a lot of arguments also because we were influenced by both our parents as well, how they think that it should be like. But later on, we came to a conclusion that no, we have to make decisions for ourselves because we accepted that we are from different backgrounds, different culture, different religion. So we decided that we are going to raise them both sides. So we will respect whatever he has to do in Hinduism. He will respect whatever that I have to do in Catholicism for, for the kids. And we have been very happy since. The beginning uh, when the kids came, uh, then there will be disagreement about how to raise their children. Uh, she's yeah. very strict, you know. Uh, cannot eat this, cannot eat it, bad for your health and all that. But I am liberal. She still remember I bought one lollipop for my daughter, as big as her face. Can you imagine how long it would take for her to lick the lollipop? <laughs> yeah, why is it by this food? I am, you know, and all that. I think communication is one of the most important. You need to communicate with each other. If you don't communicate, you sweep everything under the carpet. It's not going to work. What I would do, I would tell him, I said, if I shout, if I am angry, you keep quiet. You don't be angry don't also. Don't interrupt. don't interrupt. If he is angry, like I know that his face is like, you know, angry or whatsoever, so I won't disturb. So I would tell my kids, okay, Baba is not in the mood. You don't make him more angry. Uh, my wife and my kids, uh, they got group. <laughs> group chat? Check group. No lah, you also have. <laughs> no, without my name. Last time, what happens is, if I argue or if I get angry, I'll just walk out the house and uh, meet my friends so that we don't have very uh, heated argument. La. 
inside. You know, it's already too hot, so it's better to step out and then come back again. We will text each other what we felt. And I feel that it's a lot better because he will read everything before he answers and replies. Whereas if we do it face to face, before he complete his sentence or before I complete my sentence, we will make it even worse. So yeah, texting sort of helps. Uh. Thanks to WhatsApp. <laughs> in an argument, look at each other in the eyes and say, maybe you are right. And, and that settles everything. She doesn't want to argue, maybe you are right. So she said, this guy accept that maybe I'm right. And I was also giving a chance to myself that actually, maybe she's right, you know? There are many times when I tell him to do certain things and it's not done and I repeat myself and then he, he gets mad and <laughs> he will raise his voice. Sometimes it's so simple things. Like she said, Jeff, where is the scissors? I said, down there what? You say, hey, excuse me. Can you say that all over again in a very loving voice? And then the children are listening to what you just said yes, to me. I, yeah. You're teaching them to be rude. You need to say, I am sorry. Sorry is such a difficult word to say. You can, you can win the, the argument, but you lose that, you know, good relationship with one another. Sorry, oh, you know. <laughs> Easy. Yeah. <laughs> but for him, sometimes he will say too much. Then he will like, sorry. Then he will say second time, sorry. The third time when he wants to say, I will like, can you stop saying that? Sometimes he's very sionan. I want him to be a bit macho, that kind. So, but at least, you know, he's a man that who know how to say sorry. I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a thing deserved to, to respect uh, from us. I, you have, have you taken me for granted before? No. That's not the TT. No, no. So I appreciate everything that he does. Even the littlest thing, like to start the washing machine. I will say thank you for doing that. It's like an extra mile. No, I never take him for granted. I uh, cook good food for him mm. to eat. Yeah, I'm prosperous. Her food, very nice. Yeah, he very is not like cook. this before. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's very skinny. Last time like this, no? Yeah, uh, not, not like good. that. Uh, I'm on wheelchair, so and I shower, I need to hop on the shower chair. I change, I need to hop on the bed to change my clothes and everything. So he will help me along the way. I feel I will take him for granted, as in like, can faster or not, can what, you know, that kind of thing. But for me to spark, to realise that I take him for granted, it's quite fast. Ah. Then I will like, okay. Why I do that, you know? It's not his job or his duty to do that. He care for me and love me a lot and concerned about me a lot. That's why he do that. What does love look like to you now? So interesting. How, what does love look like to you now? Love now is companionship. I wish when the Lord call me home, call me home first. I take, say to her right now, you know, I, I can't live without you, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> wow. Yeah, boy, huh? <laughs> you share my love to our daughter. See? You know, yeah, like a bit, lah, but I, I did say she's still the number the, the ranking she's still number one. The second is to, to the baby law. <laughs> Don't believe you. Uh, really la. Can I live without her? Cannot. Um, she, she play a very important role in my heart, in my daily routines, you know, when, whenever I go work, I come back. So the first thing I want to see is her. Law. Be it whether she's in wheelchair, to me, she's still just a normal lady. La. You know, the, 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 the pain, yeah, the, you know, all the daily stuff that she encountered, to me, she's still very strong. <laughs> I think nobody asked this, this question before. Next question is... What do you think about saying I love you? What do you think about saying I love you? Um, I love you. Um, <laughs> when you get to hear these words, everything start to, you know, be whether how tired you are, you get sweeter now. Yeah, you brighten up the day. During our church wedding, um, there's this priest called Father Simon Pereira that we are very, very close to. He actually gave us a tip. 
about uh, to have a very happy marriage is where you wake up every morning and say I love you like crazy. So he make both of us <laughs> say it in front of the congregation. Everyone heard us. So it was an everyday duty and we are still doing it. Whether it's like face to face or message, but we always make sure that we say I love you every day. For me, it's action. Action. Action speaks louder than words. Yeah. So every time when she do my hair, she's saying I love you. For him, action and words, words of, affirmation. of affirmation. I have faith in you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any tips for a happy and lasting marriage? Okay. Before you get married, you have to know each other first. Learn more about your partner. During your marriage life, also continue to learn about your partner. Communicate is important. Trust each other. Do not listen to third party. End of the day, marriage is about you and your wife. Never compare your husband, your wife with somebody, husband or wife, don't compare your mother-in-law with your friend's mother-in-law. No, no comparison. Always look at the good of that, the person that you marry. Basically, it's all maintaining. Maintaining, maintaining rather than... Yeah. Like what you are in during courtship mm. time and relationship time. I know that we can maintain it until we grow old. Because well, he's the one. Yeah, and am I, am I, am I your one? Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's awkward, right? No. <laughs> we are very awkward. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he is like this. I'm a emotional guy. Can be a jovial and can be emotional. Hi Jeffrey Go. Take you, Alicia, to be my wedded wife. Thank you for being a great husband and a hands-on dad. Semoga kita dapat uh, membina mahliga yang bahagia dengan segala uh, apa, kerumitan. Tak ingat saya. Saya compromise all your uh, nonsense, all the... Oh my yeah. nonsense! <laughs> all your good and bad things. You always stay healthy. Yeah, This one you have to promise. Lah. In sickness and in health, till death do us part. Help me God. Dan Baba pun minta maaf. Dan Baba pun tak dapat nak kasih apa segala kemewahan pada Mama sama anak-anak. Baba dak yang mana yang Baba termampu dan kita akan uh, melayari bateri ini bersama. Insya-Allah. Amin. We, We still, still do. do. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> After six years of marriage, I still love you like crazy, darling. I love you 3,000. Yeah, I love you 3,000. <laughs>